Hi, good day, and welcome to the weekly wrap up for Friday, October 11th, 2024. Once again, have another powerhouse week of podcast interviews with some great esteemed and established guests, which many of you seem to like, and we greatly appreciate that. As always, if you are new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share, and hit the notifications button so you don't miss a minute of the activity. So this week's shows, we had Alistair McLeod, a very well-respected a chief economist over in Europe, one of the top five in, the, in that part of the world, uh, Derek Johnson, a new guest that he brought to us, Brad Wozni, which has obviously resonated with many of you in respect to Nassara Jassara and the currency reset, uh, Lynette Zhang, uh, where we, as you can see, we, we really lovingly challenged her regarding XRP and the currencies to the point where she is now starting to maybe recapitulate a little bit or at least reconsider her position on the subject. Eli Weber, <clears throat> next week we've got uh, our monthly meeting with Ian Farrar, co-branding partner, partner of Purium, Andy Sheckman with Miles Franklin, of course, on his monthly visit. He's always got great information for us. The venerable David Mahoney, always a character with great intel. And of course, fellow channel owner and creator, Chris, uh, with some different updates per some of your requests on Club Patriot and other administrative items. And uh, we're bringing back the lovely and talented Miss Holly Celiano, um, where she's going to be interviewing me a little bit and we'll cross over ideas like we do with David. So that should be noteworthy as well. <clears throat> and now the headline news. Nearly half of Dickey's barbecue pit locations were closed or sold during the 2024 fiscal year. That leaves only 366 locations across the U.S. still open for business under the name. The restaurant industry continues to struggle as more Americans live paycheck to paycheck and have been having difficulty going out to eat. Even larger chains with huge brand recognition cannot survive without customers who can afford their meals, and this is causing many well-known restaurant chains to file for bankruptcy or otherwise adjust their business strategies. It's a sad day for Starbucks lovers in Seattle as the chain closed the downtown Seattle store at Fifth Avenue and Pike Street on September 30th. <clears throat> the reason for the abrupt shutdown is unknown, sparking speculation of the company's status. A notice was posted on the door to alert customers of the closure on September 16th, according to KOMO News. Poundland is set to close one of their branches today after an argument with the landlord. <clears throat> the budget retailer has been forced to shutter their Sutton Coldfield site in the West Midlands after failing to reach an agreement <clears throat> with said property owner. The chain said, we now know how disappointing this will be. GE Aerospace, which took over some of the legacy jobs at General Electric Company when GE finally split into three separate companies in April, is laying off 72 workers at the downtown GE campus. The cuts become official on New Year's Eve. The layoffs were revealed in a filing GE Aerospace made Wednesday with the State Department of Labor. <clears throat> GE Aerospace employs nearly 152 people at the Schenectady campus, said the documents. The Food Bank of Southern California, a grocery and meal distribution hub serving hundreds of food pantries in Long Beach, California, as well as South LA, has closed its doors amid a state investigation into a possible multi-million dollar fraud and embezzlement scheme, according to state officials, as well as a nonprofit executive. Cases concerning guns, transgender rights, online pornography, workplace discrimination, and more cases are being set to be heard during the U.S. Supreme Court's new nine-month term that begins on Monday. After a blockbuster previous term in action on the variety of cases during the summer on an emergency basis, the court is due to open its annual term, as is customary, on the first Monday of October. <clears throat> Arguments are set for two cases. One is a procedural dispute concerning unemployment compensation, and the other involves deciding the proper jurisdiction for its class action litigation that targets pet food companies. <clears throat> excuse me, a British Canadian computer scientist who warned that artificial intelligence could pose as an existential threat to humanity has been awarded this year's Nobel Prize in Physics. <laughs> Professor Joffrey Hinton, often touted as the godfather of AI, shares the honors with U.S. academic John Hopfield for their pioneering work on machine learning, which powers AI. Real ID was be, to be on track to go in effect 
effective May 7th of 2025, but it now looks as though it will not happen until late 2027. The latest delay comes in the form of a proposal from the TSA that would give you more time to get your paperwork up to date and get the new ID ready to go. The Real ID Act of 2005 means that U.S. residents 18 and older will eventually have to present a Real ID enhanced driver's license or a passport or other federally approved identification documents in order to fly, even from state to state. Under the new proposal, travelers will be encouraged to have their Real IDs by 2025 date, but won't be turned away from the gates until May 5th, 2027. More than 1,000 staff will lose their jobs at stricken casual dining chain TGI Fridays after a partial rescue by the financial backers of Byron Burgers and upmarket restaurants chain D&D London. Hospitality investors Brill Capital and Calverton, who own brands such as Vinoteca, as well as several breweries, have agreed to buy 51 of the American-themed restaurant chain sites, securing nearly 2,400 jobs. Swedish battery maker Nordvolt said on Tuesday that one of the group's subsidiaries had filed for bankruptcy. While the rest of the cash-strapped cash -strapped group continued to consolidate its operations, the bankrupt unit Northvolt ETT Expansion AB had been responsible for a planned tripling of capacity at the group's gigafactory in northern Sweden, but the board last month canceled the project. Owing employees more than 300,000 euro, which roughly equates to 393,000 US, Rankin Group, the advertising agency owned by stalwart British photographer Rankin, has filed for bankruptcy. <clears throat> owing a further 1.3 million to the UK tax authority, HMRC. Full name John Rankin Waddell, he has photographed the likes of Queen Elizabeth II, Madonna, and David Bowie, and set up his advertising agency initially called Rankin Creative nearly five years ago. The Florida company responsible for a major leak of social security numbers has filed for chapter 11. According to court documents, National Public Data filed for bankruptcy last week as its parent company, Jericho Pictures, faces a wave of lawsuits demanding that it pays damages. The bankruptcy filings reveal that the company's estimates it will need to notify and pay for credit monitoring for hundreds and uh, millions of potentially impacted individuals. That's because the breach led to a hacker to steal a trove of data containing 272 million unique social security numbers from U.S. residents, along with 600 million phone numbers. Boston's Barbara Lynch era is officially coming to an end. Lynch's chief operating officer, Lorraine Tomlinson Hall, confirmed with Eater today that Lynch is shutting down all of her remaining restaurants after other local outlets reported the sole closure of the Rudder in Gloucester early this morning. The Rudder is shutting down, but so is Lynch's flagship spot in Beacon Hill, Number 9 Park, as well as B&G Oysters in the South End. The Rudder is closed effective immediately. Number 9 Park will close at the end of the year, and B&G's exact closing date has not yet been finalized. And finally, Amazon is laying off 14,000 remote workers and managers in an effort to save nearly $3 billion per year, this according to Morgan Stanley. Now here are the precious metals and oil as of this time of the broadcast. The gold at $2,644.20, silver holding at $31.21, and Brent crude upticking at $77.75. Now here are the latest notable deaths and resignations. Liam Keelan is exiting his role as Disney's Senior Vice President of Original Content, EMEA, We Can Reveal. The veteran British exec has been with Disney for nearly five years, but has decided to leave in early 2025. News of the departure was transmitted internally moments ago. A recruitment process for a replacement is set to begin and will no doubt attract big players from the inter international community, given the size and scope of the role. The new media recruit will continue to report to Diego Londono, Disney's EVP of media networks and content. John Lewis partnership boss, Nish Kanakala is set to step back from the role of chief executive following the appointment of the new chairman, Jason Terry, at the helm. The group has announced. The employee-owned retailer, which runs the department store chain in Waitrose Supermarket Arm, said Mr. Kanakala will revert to the role of non-executive in March next year, and the post will be scrapped. French-American rapper Lucas Colley has died at the age of 27. The news was confirmed by his manager on Thursday, October 3rd, 
the musician was famous for his viral single, viral single I Just Wanna, released in 2016. Bob Yerkes, the acrobatic stunt performer who slid down a clock tower cable for Christopher Lloyd in Back to the Future and hung around the Statue of Liberty under repair for Fred Ward in Remo Williams. The adventure begins, has died. He was 92. Yerkes died Tuesday at his home in Northridge, Darlene, Ava Williams, a stunt performer and one of his many mentees had announced. Italian tennis great Leah Perchioli has died at the age of 89. On Friday, the Italian Tennis Federation said, Perchioli, uh, who was born March 22nd, 1935 in Milan, was a top tennis player in the 1950s and 60s and later a popular television presenter and journalist. She reached the last 16 of the French Open two times and the Wimbledon Championships three times was also famous for her choice of clothing, which brought a frilly frisson to the game. The Japanese singer Sayuri, known for singing many songs featured in Japanese animation, has been reported to have passed away at the young age of 28 by Tokyo Hive. Her death is a quite tragic one as she died from a chronic illness. Thomas Rockwell, who guarded the legacy of his father, illustrator Norman Rockwell, and made the name of his own as the author of, quote, How to Eat Fried Worms, unquote, a best-selling children's novel that has delighted generations of young readers, died on September 27th at a hospice center in Danbury, Connecticut. He was 91. Taylor Russo Gregg has died at the age of 25, according to an Instagram post made by her husband. On Saturday, October 5th, Cameron Gregg confirmed his wife passing was, quote, sudden and unexpected, but did not reveal the cause of death. Former Sheffield United defender George Baldock has died at the age of 31. Super League Greece has announced Greece International Baldock signed for Panathalakos this summer after a seven-year spell at Bromel Lane, making his debut in August. The fullback, who was not named in the Greece squad to face England on Thursday, featured in Sunday a 0-0 draw with the Olympiakos. A 100-year-old Holocaust survivor whose story became famous as she searched for the family of a soldier who saved her has died, Hungarian-born Lily Hebert, who lived in Northwest London, was taken to Auschwitz-Birkenau in 1944 with her family when she was only 20. Her story went viral four years ago when she tried to find out more about the American soldier who then liberated her from a death march in Germany. <clears throat> Tragic news comes out of Nepal today after pioneering big mountain skier and climber Michael Gardner is reported to have died in a climbing accident. Details of the accident are still emerging, but the mountaineering news site Explorers Web reports that Gardner fell while attempting a new route on unclimbed 7,468 meter Janu East. Roger K. Lewis, an architect who turned his fascination with urban planning into a more than 30 year run at the Washington Post with eclectic columns and wry cartoons on topics ranging from rising rents to shrinking public spaces died on October 2nd at his home in DC, he was 83. Lord Herman Ousley, founder of the campaign that is now called Kick It Out, has died at the age of 79, the charity has announced. Lord Ousley founded Kick It Out, which was originally named Let's Kick Racism Out of Football in 1993, before being the organization's chair for 25 years. Lord Ousley was a titan in tackling discrimination in football over the last 25 years. Detroit Lions legend Greg Landry has died. The Detroit Lions announced on social media Friday night, Landry was a first round pick for the Lions back in 1968. The All-Pro quarterback would then play with Detroit for the next 11 seasons, finishing his Lions career with a 40, 41 and three record before moving on to a short stint with the Baltimore Colts, Chicago Bears and a two year stay in the USFL. Ratan Tata, the former Tata Group chairman who put a staid and sprawling Indian conglomerate on the global stage with a string of high profile acquisitions has died, the Tata Group said in a statement late on Wednesday, he was 86. Tata, who ran conglomerate for more than 20 years as a chairman, has been undergoing intensive care at a Mumbai hospital, two sources with direct knowledge of his medical situation told Reuters earlier on Wednesday. Bishop E. Ann Henning Byfield, a leader of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, has died two months into her retirement, the denomination announced on Thursday. Byfield, 74, a former president of the AME Council of Bishops, 
as well as a recent chair of social action for the church died unexpectedly on Thursday in Indianapolis. The cause of her death was not announced. Robert Bob Rosen, a pioneering film historian, archivist, and former dean of the UCLA School of Theater, Film, and Television has died. He was 84. Rosen passed away on October 2nd, UCLA said on Friday, without specifying a cause of death. Born in 1940, Rosen was named dean of the UCLA School of Theater, Film, and Television in 1999, a position he held for just over a decade. Susie Maxwell Burning, a trailblazing three-time champion of the United States Women's Open Golf Tournament, who is known for her tenacity on the fairway and her grace off it, died on Wednesday at her home in Indio in Southern California. She was 83. Her daughter, Cindy Mulcahy, confirmed the death. She said her mother had lung cancer for nearly two years. Israeli businessman, Elhalan Tannenbaum, who was taken hostage at Hezbollah in 2000 and released four years later in a swap, died at age 78. Tannenbaum was captured by the terror group after being lured into Dubai in October 2000 for an ostensible drug deal. He was freed in exchange for some 400 prisoners held by Israel. Matthew Lewis Jr., the Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist who documented some of the 20th century's most pivotal moments, has died at 94. Lewis Jr. covered some of America's most famous faces, including Martin Luther King Jr., Muhammad Ali, and John Lennon. Doc Harris, the prolific voice actor and radio personality perhaps best known for his narration in Dragon Ball Z, has died. Harris passed away on Saturday, October 5th, following a minor surgery last month per broadcast dialogue. Harris was widely recognized as a celebrated Canadian broadcaster. However, to anime enthusiasts, he is best known as narrator, narrator for Ocean Productions' English dub versions of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, along with several of its movies. The Boston Red Sox organization and fan base were shaken on Tuesday as WBZ-TV's Dan Roche confirmed that former MLB pitcher Louis Tiant has died at the age of 83. <clears throat> the Cuban native played for uh, the MLB for 19 seasons with the Red Sox earning uh, three all-star nominations and leading the American League in ERA twice. Former Netherlands and Ajax legend Johan Niskens has died at the age of 73. The Royal Dutch Football Association confirmed the sad passing on Monday. During the last former Netherlands and Ajax legend had died um, and Royal Dutch Football Association has confirmed it once again. Lor Segal, an Austrian-American novelist who with a striking combination of wit and sensitivity wrote about displacement memory as well as her own treacherous journey from Nazi occupied Vienna to a literary life in New York died October 7th at her home in Manhattan. She was 96. And this folks concludes the section of the deaths and resignations. Now on to the commentary section. So our team reads the comments as much as they're able to especially given the important, meaningful, positive, and edifying ones. We see you and those who fit this description to you, we speak, thank you. We thank you for your support and your positivity and bringing up the frequency of the channel to the highest possible level. You see, when we started this channel, specifically my part of it a year ago, it was, the, it was with the proviso that we'd be reaching out to God's giving people for the full extent of the incoming wealth transfer. And never in our wildest imaginations did we even consider the extent of the outreach. We're seeing all of you as true supporters from all around the globe, from Australia to Asia, the Philippines, Canada, and all across North America. We're hearing from people that are pastors, doctors, housewives, EMTs, salespeople, musicians, the whole lot. And it blows our minds that God has used this platform to have such a dramatic outreach. We even came across a, publica a publication in Japan that is putting out our messages and translating it. That's amazing unto itself. God is good all the time. He sees your hearts and your true intentions, and we appreciate that positivity and the support of our fans thereof, because without you, we cannot do what we do. And this is just a personal recommendation. We know that many of you are busy. You have kids, you have jobs, maybe you run companies, whatever you're doing. And so we, we acknowledge and appreciate that those are major considerations. And so in order to maximize the information we share, we're noticing that there's a lot of repetitive comments over and over. Some of that is new guests. We get that. But then there's some people asking the same things over and over again. We just humbly recommend that 
watch these videos when you can give it your full attention. We, we have some people who said, hey, you know, I'm watching you while I'm cooking or things like that. What understandable. But when you multitask, I don't know about you, but for me, I multitask. I can't give it my full attention. So I, I can only focus on one thing at a time. Maybe some of you are good multitaskers, but as a general rule of thumb, this is important information, we believe. So we're just humbly recommending try not to multitask when you're watching it. This way you get the most out of what we say and you won't have to keep asking the same questions. You won't miss some of the key information that we're sharing in different spots and it'll be more efficient for you and for us concerned. That does it for this week's uh, podcast and this week's uh, wrap up. As we would expect, there'll be more updates coming on with respect to Israel and nuclear power plants, but many other things, financial as well, peace deals and the like. As those things come out, we will bring them to you. Otherwise, have a great and safe weekend, especially our hearts and prayers go out to the victims in Florida where I do have family. Thankfully, they were not affected, but we do pray for the ones that were, and we pray for a speedy recovery and that they would get unexpected help at an unexpected time. And God is good all the time. And we thank you for your support. Again, have a great, safe weekend. God bless. Take care. Goodbye for now.